Sunscreen is by far one of the most important products in your skincare routine, but for people with medium to dark skin complexions, it could be the most difficult one to find. On this episode of Sunscreen for Dark Skin, we are putting the Basque Daily Invisible Gel Broad Spectrum SPF 40 sunscreen to the test to see if it's black girl approved. If you missed the last episode, I will put it in the cards above. Be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell to be notified every time we put another sunscreen in the hot seat. Without further ado, let's get started. As I'm rating this SPF, I'm keeping 10 qualities in mind, and at the end, I'm giving it an overall rating out of 10. Let's talk a little bit about the product. So on the website, the claims are that it's a feel good face sunscreen. It says that it is a velvety smooth application for an effortless, completely weightless, non oily dry down. It's completely invisible on all skin tones and it's even good for facial hair. I know for a lot of men, the sunscreen gets stuck in the hair on your face and that's not that flattering. So this one should be good for that. I often get a lot of questions about waterproof or sweat proof uh, sunscreens. This one is water and sweat resistant for up to eight minutes so we love that it's deeply hydrating and restorative it's made with squalane that's supposed to support the natural lipid uh, barrier of your skin so it's going to be improving your skin while you wear it it also doubles as a makeup primer I love products that are multi-purpose and you can put this underneath your makeup to make sure that it adheres properly and it blurs and smooths out your complexion it also says that it can be applied over makeup without causing any smudging or any patchiness but we'll be the judge of that also to note, it is fragrance-free, non-communogenic, and hyperallergenic. The later two are really buzzwords that don't really mean anything, but it is fragrance-free, which is great. Um, it's dermatologist recommended, safe for sensitive skin. It's a Hawaii reef friendly, according to the AC 104. So yes, for the reefs. And it's tested for and free of benzene contamination, which I know back in 2023, we had a lot of recalls for benzene. So good to know that this is made without it. So those are the claims of the product. And so far it's really, really great, but we will definitely be the judge of that. A little bit about the brand. So Basque is a skincare brand made in Miami that specializes in sunscreen for both the face and the body. They have a roster of spray sunscreens, lotion sunscreens, as well as clear gel formulas. Sunscreen can be really expensive, as we all know, but interestingly enough, they offer a lot of bundles so you can purchase in preparation for the summer season. So that's really great, especially if you have a bigger family or if you are really on your skincare game and you love to reapply. The company was started after one of the founders lost a family member to skin cancer. That really hits home for me because I also lost a family member to skin cancer and it's one of the reasons why I'm so religious about wearing sunscreen and why I have a whole series dedicated to it. Basque is now on a mission to create great feeling SPF formulas that are lightweight, non-oily, easy to apply, and better for us and the environment. So I really resonate with the, the reason why this company was started and their mission as well. Let's see, they are oxybenzone, octinoxate, benzene free, and they're made with sustainably sourced ingredients. They're also paraben and sulfate free. So a lot of the free stuff, that's, that's wonderful. They're also committed to spreading SPF awareness through the Skin Protection Foundation to help make sunscreen more accessible. And I definitely see that message throughout their branding as well as throughout what they offer, the unique bundles that they offer that they're really trying to make it more accessible. In terms of shipping, they currently only ship to the US, Canada, Germany, and Italy, but hopefully they'll expand that in the future. You can definitely check their website for more information there. Um, lastly, the return policy, they do not accept returns because it's a personal care product, but they do provide refunds if you're not satisfied with the product or it's damaged in any way. Overall for the brand, it really does resonate with me. I really enjoy their mission and I'm seeing consistent branding throughout their entire um, offerings, their page and all that good stuff. I love what they stand for. I love what they're doing and I'm gonna be giving Brand a point. Next, let's talk about the packaging. So clearly this comes in a sleek matte tube, which you know is one of my favorites because it's so easy to cut. And when you cut it off, you can scoop out every last drop. So I love that. The colors of the product itself is really eye-catching. A lot of their products on their websites are eye-catching as well. It seems like they're targeting like Gen Z with all the colors. Personally, I love more elegant styling to my products, but I can definitely see who this is for. And I know that a lot of people would love the bright colors too. It has a twist lock cap, so it seals properly and you don't have to worry about spilling. It has a slightly wider nozzle. So if like me, you do like the two finger method, you just need to be careful. See, I just literally held it upside down and it kind of fell out a little bit. So, um, 
it can be a little bit messy but not to the point where it's like overflowing and making the cap look weird it just comes out really really easily you barely have to touch it for the packaging it's really simple it's it's user friendly you can travel with it i like it and it's going to be getting a point from me next let's talk about price and quantity so this product retails for 28 usd i'm in canada so i'm using canadian price that's 38 dollars for 50 milliliters worth of product if you've watched a number of my videos before you know that i like to use the daily cost average to figure out how much product you are getting how much product you need to use for your face and how much it's going to cost you every single time you apply it so i already did the math here for you i will put the math here on the screen this product will last you about 42.5 days and it will cost you 89 cents every time you apply it now once again the math that i'm using is based on one application so if you do two applications a day with the same sunscreen then your math will be a little bit different but i'm doing it based on one um 89 cents is a little bit on the pricey side compared to the other sunscreens that i've reviewed before um but because the packaging is so simple i'm inferring that it's because the ingredients are as i said sustainably sourced and they're spending more on that so i love to see that in in my products um overall i'm going to be giving price and quantity a 0.7 Let's talk about the ingredients. The sunscreen provides 40 SPF protection, which is 97% of UVB. So UVB for the burning, UVA, A for the aging. Um, it is also broad spectrum, so it does cover both UVA and UVB. That is a standard messaging when it comes to US or Western sunscreens in general. So they have four sunscreens. These are the most common ones that I've seen, especially in the Western sunscreens as well. This is avobenzone, homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylene. So really good mix of both UVB and UVA. So, and it's broad spectrum, like we said before. So it's providing a good, a good amount of protection there. For the other ingredients in the product, right off the bat, I was really impressed by this ingredient list, to be honest. It only has nine ingredients. Now, to be clear, smaller ingredient list does not automatically mean that the product is better but personally i like seeing a smaller ingredient list it just makes me feel like i can understand what's in here you know what i mean anyways on the paula's choice ingredient list website all of these ingredients are rated good or best so like yeah they're pretty good ingredients here um it is a silicone based spf so you'll definitely need to use water-based products underneath and also water-based makeup if you're applying that on top as well it's designed to hydrate condition and support the skin's natural barrier and it does so with ingredients like coconut oil olive derived squalane which is one of the best oils for acne prone skin um it also has I can't pronounce that one, but some sort of butter. Uh, it, only, it comes with aloe leaf extract, among other things as well. Simple ingredients. They're great for the skin barrier. Nothing really stands out to me like, oh my God, wow, that's an amazing ingredient I've never heard of before. But I do think it has a really lovely ingredient list. And the quality of the ingredients is probably what's contributing to the price as well. Um, so for the ingredients, I, I really like it, to be honest. It's going to be getting a point from me. Let's talk about application. So the product has a very silky velvet texture. It really does feel like a silicone primer. That's the best way that I can describe it. It's clear with a slight yellow hue to it. Um, it spreads over the skin super, super easily. And it, honestly, the, the texture is, I cannot get over it. It feels absolutely phenomenal. It also spreads over the skin really, really easily. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of silicone textured products in general silicone based products are really good for kind of filling in your lines so anything like dimethicone silicone they fill in any pores and just make your skin look porcelain they're usually a lot of mattifying products as well which is not like I don't really like to mattify my face I don't find this one really gives you like a matte finish so it's not too too bad and the product itself does absorb into your skin eventually and creates a coating on your skin which is really interesting but thankfully there isn't too much of a coating on your hands either so you don't really need to wash it off I did find it pilled just a little bit with the products underneath okay? I used a water-based gel moisturizer and I still got that pilling mostly on my neck versus on my face and I think it's because that silicone dried down to that like barrier texture and I 
I probably kept blending it when it was no longer wet and that's probably what happened. I did apply it again on a day just smoothing it out over my skin rather than rubbing it in and I had much better results that way. So if you're going to use silicone textured products, definitely smooth it over your skin. Don't keep rubbing it in, okay? Another really good tip to prevent pilling with this product or otherwise is to just slow down with your skincare routine. We have this need to rush through our skincare routine, but this is supposed to be a spa, luxurious, self-loving experience. So slow down. Um, allow the different layers of your skincare to dry and absorb fully before applying your sunscreen. And then of course, allow your sunscreen to dry fully before applying makeup. So as long as you're waiting, it should be fine and you should experience less pilling or none at all. So for application, this is gonna be getting a 0.8. Let's talk about the finish. This product leaves a nice healthy sheen on the skin. It's not matte, it's like a skin-like finish, which I really do enjoy. It makes your skin feel incredibly smooth and soft to the touch without any of that tacky texture. And that's probably because of that silicone film that dries on your face. Um, but it, it doesn't feel heavy at all. It doesn't feel greasy. It doesn't exacerbate your oil. And of course, like I said, it feels lightweight. What I really like is that the texture itself literally disappears into your skin. Both the color and the texture disappear seamlessly into your skin. I really enjoy that. I'm not a huge fan of silicone textures, but this one is pretty good, I must say. So for finish, I'm going to be giving it a point. Reapplication. So I did not have any issues reapplying this product over itself after two hours of wearing it and letting it dry down. My makeup also clung to the product really well. It was very easy to disperse the makeup on top of it. So it really does act like a primer. It was very easy to get good coverage with my foundation. And like I said, it made my skin look incredibly smooth. Over makeup was kind of a different story. Unfortunately, it did disturb my makeup quite a bit. I was using a water-based foundation. Um, I wanted to make sure I was using the right formula, but my makeup came right off. <laughs> so not really a reapplication uh, sunscreen, in my opinion, if you're doing it over makeup. That being said, like I said, I only have water-based formulas and I don't tend to wear silicone products. Maybe if I was wearing a silicone um, foundation, it may have appeared differently. So not really an over makeup application, but reapplication in general is just fine. For reapplication, it will be getting a 0.7. All right, now the easy part. <laughs> white cast as you mentioned before there is zero white cast it is an invisible gel like the name suggests and it is true to that claim so for white cast that will be getting a point from me for fragrance it's no secret that i am a huge fan of fragrance free products i have a sensitive skin combination acne prone and eczema skin so so I don't really enjoy too much fragrance and thankfully this one is fragrance free. So fragrance will be getting a point from me. Last but not least, we have flashback. I did take a flash photography photo using this sunscreen after applying it on my face three times and there was no flashback. So this one will keep you safe for all of your pictures. Flashback will be getting a point from me. Overall, I really did enjoy using this sunscreen, which was really surprising to me because it was silicone and I don't really like silicone sunscreens, but this one, I don't know how to describe it, but it dries down to a point where it doesn't feel like you're wearing silicone. I think that people with combination and oily skin will really enjoy this sunscreen, but I do believe it is suitable for all skin types. I'm wearing it today and it looks fantastic under my makeup. There isn't an excess shine on my face. I, I, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. And I think people who don't like silicone sunscreens will like this one as well. I love that it's invisible, which is great on dark skin complexions. And overall, this product will be getting an 8.5. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this invisible sunscreen. Have you tried it? Will you be trying? What are your opinions? Go ahead and click over here to see some of my previous videos. And as always, stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, and I will see you lovely ladies and gents in my next video. Bye.